Okay, y'all, so I'm gonna show you the last few steps for our um, Amy Sherrill portraits. We talked about how she uses lots of pattern and these very simple, almost solid backgrounds with the exception of a few where she's included some um, backgrounds like a simple sky or a very simple pattern. So we're gonna go ahead and finish those. Hopefully this weekend you will get those done, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I'm finishing mine. All right, so when I left you, we still had, um, we, you were working on your patterns to create your clothes out of. I've finished my pattern and my clothes and I've gone ahead and added some arms very simply and used the same things to color, okay? At this point, I'm gonna add my hair and I wanna remind you that your hair does not grow out of the very, very top of your head. We all have this hairline that starts where the hair starts growing out of your forehead. So I'm just gonna mark that so I know where that hairline is for me. For me, most of that will get covered up because I do have bangs, but for some of you, especially those of you who have really short hair, you know, like Alex and Elijah, you have very short hair, you're not gonna add a lot more beyond that line, okay? For those of us who have long hair, it's going to come from the space down in front of your face a little bit and off to the back, okay? So I'm just gonna draw a basic outline of my hair. Um, I Like I said, I have bangs, so I'm just gonna add that basic outline of my bangs. I know that my hair comes down past my shoulders, so I'm just gonna kind of draw it as if it's going behind me and down my back. It has a little bit of a wave to it, so I'm gonna add those waves in as well. And then I imagine that if I were to take a black and white photo of myself, my hair would be pretty dark, black in some places and gray in others because it's kind of, well, it is black in places and then red in others. So I'm going to start with the lighter part of my hair. And that's gonna be the red part, those gray scales. So you're even doing this in a gray scale. Okay, if your hair is really dark, you are really lucky. All you have to do is color your hair black. I do have those red highlights that are very, um, characteristic of me, so I am going to include those. Um, I'm actually going to use a marker for the black part of my hair because you can kind of, I like to mix media sometimes, which is supplies. And what that's going to do is it's not going to cover up the gray that I go right on top of because it's the same effect as a water color. Um, but you can choose to use whatever tools you want to use to do this. Just remember to consider what your hair color is when doing it. And I like to do strokes that kind of go in the pattern of my hair with my marker. All right, adding in that. Let's do my bangs. Okay, and this is kind of what I would imagine my hair to look like if I had taken a black and white photo. So now that you have your whole your clothing, your face, your the rest of your body. You're simply going to cut this out. So at this point, once you've added your hair, your clothes should be gl glued down pretty well. So now I'm gonna cut the rest of this out. I'm gonna trim the bottom part of my dress off because it's a little extra. I'm gonna cut the rest of me out of this paper. Cutting right around that pattern that we cut out of different paper before, right around my hair. Okay. Um, if you have like a little space under your arms that you need to cut out like right here. Um, I just usually take my scissors and very gently, I put a finger underneath that same space right here on the other side. And I very gently, very gently kind of twist my scissors back and forth until a hole gets poked in there. And then you can kind of get your scissors. And I just use the last like centimeter of my scissors to cut that. So I just go, take my time, I go really slow. Do a lot of turning. So 
and get in those little nooks and crannies with just those ends of my scissors. All right, so there's one, the other one. Same twisting motion, makes the hole. I had a finger behind it so I didn't, I put the finger behind it so you don't accidentally push it through and then um, cut one of your other fingers on accident. So that little finger that you're poking kind of saves your other fingers from danger. Oops. Okay, so at this point you have two options. You can simply take a piece of your colored construction paper and glue this on there. It would be really easy. That's a good option. That'll look really nice. It'll basically, I don't have one right here next to me. It'll basically be like gluing it onto a solid background. Anything that you have that's a solid background, you can totally do that as long as it's a bright color, okay? The other option is if you do not have a color back, um, colored paper, if you do not have construction paper, you can take a piece of white paper, lined or otherwise, and you can paint it a solid color or you can um, color it a solid color with your crayons. I actually really like the look of this because it gives it um, a different kind of texture. And then you're just gonna glue that on top of there. So the main thing is that your background is a bright color, it's solid, and you glue your portrait on top of it. It can be um, a painted background or a solid piece of construction paper. 